this is America. We have something called the Constitution. <laughs> you know, you tell me what parts of the Constitution that you're willing to infringe on and, and put um, little pressures on or you're willing to get rid of altogether. You tell me what parts are cool for you to get rid of. I personally don't want to get rid of any of it. I'm willing to defend all of it. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. All right, we're back, yo. And is Trump really planning a private firearm sales background check app? What? We're going to talk about that, plus channel updates coming up right now. All right, so this is an update video since we've been on the road for about a week and it seems like the whole two-way world is falling apart, uh, which it seems to be doing uh, every time we turn around here. Uh, there's definitely news about uh, that's come out in the last week with Bader O'Rourke at the debates finally admitting that he's out for your AR-15s and your AK-47s. That's what we've been telling you all this time. It's good to see that there's more people out there waking up this is what these guys want. Also, on top of that, you know, we know that this week the Trump administration, the White House, is going to be coming out with their proposals since Republicans are waiting to see what Trump is going to go for. Let's keep in mind that it is an election year. And, um, of course, Democrats, folks on the left, are asking for drastic gun control here in America, um, uh, seizures of guns by what they call voluntary buybacks. So all of that kind of stuff we're going to be dealing with out there. Let's start with uh, what Lola and I have been up to this week. Last week, at the early part of the week, we were actually hanging out with the guys from PSA, Palmetto State Armory, uh, in South Carolina. So that was good. I'm going to roll out some video from that experience. It was pretty good. We had a chance to see what their, at least part of their production facilities look like. We went to DC Machine. I will have some video of that. It was, it was really good to see the amount of uh, quality control and effort they put into building what they're building now. We didn't, um, some stuff came up and we didn't get to see them making lowers. We did get to see them making barrels. I was very impressed by that process. I think uh, everyone out there making ARs and other stuff, because they're not just making ARs, you guys, you know, you're going to have to look out, man. PSA is coming for you. So we're going to include that in there. I also did get a chance. Uh, myself and Lola actually we got to hit a target out at a mile that's like I don't even can you even fathom that you know I've shot long distance before I think I've done about a thousand yards but a mile that was awesome Lola, Lola also hit it we'll talk about that in videos coming up here you guys will see it on the channel uh, who knows what's gonna happen to it so make sure that you tune in to us on GunStreamer because that's where the uh, the real stuff's going uh, then the latter part of the week, we were hanging out at the Social Summit 2019 in uh, Utah. So we flew out to Vegas, drove out to Utah. We were at the uh, Zion National Park in Utah. Uh, pretty awesome experience there. We went canyoneering. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was something else. So I'm going to have to uh, detail everything that happened there to you guys as soon as we get a chance. So be on the lookout for it. We right now have a Jeep rig walk around like a safari rig. I know not everyone's into car stuff, but a lot of gun guys like uh, Jeeps, including myself. So please check that out. It's a great video. Also, make sure you tune in to us on GunStreamer because, you know, they come down on a lot of our content here. And if you're wondering what's happening to that stuff, it's over on GunStreamer. I try to put it up here, and then when it gets suppressed, I put it over on GunStreamer, so check that out. Before I even say anything else there, thanks for being patient uh, with us and waiting out the week, checking out the other videos that we have, uh, including on the podcast channel, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. So let's jump into this story here. I'm going to pull up, this is the headline. This is from American Military News, for anyone who wants to look at this article. There's actually several articles out there. And um, I decided to talk about it because I think not everyone's covering it. I, I did enjoy the coverage from everyone else while we were gone on what was happening. I think Colin Noir had a really great video on this that if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. My friend Reed Hendricks also had another good video. Lots of folks out there in the 2A community on top of all of this. Um, but here's something that I think not everyone is looking at and I wanted to talk about. So 
American military news. Here's the headline. Trump looking at background check mobile app for private gun sales. Uh, I'm just going to read through this really quick. A newly proposed app would let users access the federal background check database. Um, may be part of the next step in ex uh, expanding measures to control the purchase and sales of firearms. President Donald Trump has been in talks with lawmakers about the creation of an app that, an app that would connect the National Instant Criminal Background Check System and is um, intended to be used in private party gun sales. The Washington Post is reporting this. The concept for a background check app may be one specific proposal in a call for expanded background checks on firearm sales. Currently, storefront purchases of firearms are required to go through retailers that have a federal firearms license, while private transfers of firearms do not bear the same requirements for background checks. So let me just quickly explain that to people who don't understand. If you have an FFL, um, whether you have a brick and mortar store, whether it's big or small, or you just have an FFL, people are able to have those like myself that works out of your home. Lola and I have such a thing. You have to do background checks on um, everything that goes through your store. Now, what's also allowed, in, not everywhere in America, but what's also allowed currently is that if you make private sales, so in other words, guns that belong to yourself, even if you're an FFL, if these guns belong to you and um, you want to make private sales of those guns to people that you know, then you're allowed to do that without going through the background check process. Um, Every state has different rules on that. We're in Florida, so in Florida you have to be aware that that person is a resident of the state of Florida. Um, that's pretty much it. People do other things beyond that. But if you're aware that they're a resident of the state of Florida, then you, um, on your own you know, merit or trust or knowledge of that person, you can decide, okay, I'm going to make a private sale to that person. Lots of people don't like that, but think about this. Neighbors... Uh, friends, family members, why shouldn't you be able to buy or, tr or sell or trade private property between those people? We do it in lots of other cases. We do it in lots of other cases of things that can be deadly. On the books, more deadly than guns. So I don't really see a, a thing with that there. I think it's a way for the government to get more money, um, create a registry, make it more difficult for people to do um, also to put people in prison. So this is why I'm against that. So that's, you know, that's the basics of how that works. Let's move forward here in the article. Uh, lawmakers and congressional aides are reportedly divided on the proposal and have raised privacy concerns over the intended use of the app. Information and um, how secure it would be from abuse. Senate Majority Whip John Thune expressed concern to the Washington Post that the app would expand beyond the stated intended use and would kind of be a de facto registry. Um, it's fraught with a lot of issues when it comes to some of the Second Amendment concerns, Thune said. That's a quote from him. Thune said he originally learned about the app proposal from a White House official. Uh, Chris Brown, the president of the Brady campaign, in contrast, said the news of the proposal is a signal that Trump is looking at private firearm sales, which he describes as a current legal loophole, um, as an area his administration can reform. Uh, I, I don't think it's a legal loophole. Why are you not allowed to sell? These, these are inanimate objects. Can they, can they be dangerous? Yes. Lots of objects in the world can be dangerous. Due to my fist, a rock. You know, anything, if I look around me, I can pick up some blunt object. I've got, like, uh, I've got tripods back here. Uh, these are dangerous. You know, am I going to have to register those every time I sell them? Are you going to have to register your, uh, your cutlery and all that kind of stuff, your baseball bat? For sure, people do, you know, evil, horrible people do bad things with them. But evil, horrible people do bad things with lots of things. Cars planes, box cutters, etc. Um, so th just to go on to, to uh, see what they're talking about here in this article before I give my opinion, um, they recognize the problem of the private sale loophole that allows 20% of guns to be sold with no background check at all, Brown to uh, told uh, CNN. Brown spoke in favor of legislation voted on by the Democrat-controlled House of Representatives, which proposes expansions of background check requirements to include private uh, transfers. 
So this is what a lot of, uh, it's happening actually in lots of states around the country. I believe it's happening in Delaware, in New Jersey, lots of other places that even when you do private sales, so you're selling a, a firearm to your neighbor. Now you have to go to a store or someone who's an FFL and you have to pay them a fee and you know, you, you've got to go through that whole process. Why? It doesn't make any kind of sense. And this is not this is not really a problem. The problem doesn't lie here, but these folks don't really want to deal with that. We've spoken about that before. We could talk about it at length. Um, the right balance was struck by the House, which passed background checks bill, where sales by private sellers are com uh, completed by a federally licensed firearms dealer to confirm the per uh, person purchasing the gun is the same person who is picking up the gun and other assessments of risk before completion of the sales are done, Brown said. He called on Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of the Republican-controlled Senate to pass the new background checks. You know, Trump is reportedly preparing to announce new gun control proposals this very week, we're in Tuesday, and gun control advocates and gun rights advocates alike are uncertain what he will propose. We, yeah, we don't have any idea. Uh, maybe the NRA folks do, but who knows? They've got their own issues going on. Although I must say, it seems like Wayne LaPierre was kind of able in the recent past to talk Trump off the ledge. Uh, we don't really know what they're talking about here and what they're negotiating. What we do know is we don't have a seat at the table. Um, I'm pretty happy with the Second Amendment, the Constitution as it is. We'll talk about that here in a second. They go on to talking about like red flag laws and you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, and, and there's like assault weapons bans and magazine capacity limits and all that kind of stuff. This is where I'm going to kind of like step away from the article. The big thing in here to me is this app. I don't like the idea of the app. I don't like the idea of expanding the background checks. I just don't think that that's necessary. Now, I know right now the way that we have it um, and what we have to do going through FFLs, uh, dealing with the ATF and, and FBI background checks, I think that's already an infringement. There's no other thing that we, that we have to go through that when we buy, when we have our private property, we don't have to go through that for other things. Now maybe if you buy a car you have to go through kind of like a credit check to see if you have the money if you're not paying cash. But if you're buying that car cash, you don't really have to go through that. I think there's some kind of law. If you spend over $10,000, the bank has to report it to the federal government. All of that stuff is infringement. None of their damn business. But we do currently have those infringements in place. And we're already dealing with that. And in my personal opinion, this is why I'm like a not one incher. I don't want to give anything else because we've given so much in the past. So when it comes to either one of these, I'm not for it. Um, and, and that includes like a, a federal law that says that everyone that makes a private sale has to go through the background check system. I think that's just another form of taxation that um, anyone can use and, and abuse. Okay, And it's just another way to generate money. And as an FFL myself, I stand to make money from it. I'm not for that. So now what they're, what they're looking at is this app like, okay, what we'll do, we'll create an app. You can download this app. And then when you sell, when you make these private sales, you can background check someone. What? Yeah, that's going to be abuse. You're saying right now, as an FFL, um, we have the ability to background check people. And there's things in place saying that, you know, you can't just randomly background check someone. You can only use that if, if you are selling firearms. So if someone's transferring in, it comes from a company to us, they bought something online, whatever it is, it comes into us, we background check them, they get it. What are we talking about here? Now you want to put that in the hands of, any, of anyone, people who don't even have firearms who are not doing private sales. Now they can just start background checking people. What's, you know, what's going to be the cost of it? What's going to be the actual cost of that app? What's going to be the cost every time they background check someone? Where's the checks and balances on that? Um, also, yeah, I, I think that there is a, a, a massive probability here. It's, it's very highly likely that they're going to use this as a form of registry because now they know what you have. And now they know who you sold it to. And it's records. And don't believe that they won't. Um, I mean, obviously, someone's keeping track of these records, right? So if it's a phone app, Apple's keeping charge of it, Android, whoever's making the app, the government can request it, 
all these kinds of different things. And then also it's putting a level of responsibility on you that I don't think it's fair when you're selling something that is private property, uh, protected by the Second Amendment, your right to own this private property. The firearm itself is not a bad guy. It's not a bad guy or a good guy. It's simply a tool. That's all it is. It doesn't do bad things without human beings. We do the bad things with it sometimes. Most of the times, we do good things with it. We use it for sport, for hunting, for protection, um, or just for fun. And no one gets hurt, no one's destroyed, no one's damaged by that. But then there are some bad, evil, horrible, broken people out there that do bad things. And when, when those people want to do those things, they'll use anything. But those of us who are law-abiding, we're the ones that have to suffer, bear, bear the responsibility, be tracked. You know, if you think that they're never going to request these, um, they're never going. No one's ever going to request this information. No one's ever going to use it against you. Then it's that's totally insane. This is what we're dealing with in America right now, at this time, especially when there are broken people. We're thinking that the way to go here is to take away the ability of the hardworking, uh, honest. Uh, citizens, the good people, we need to declaw those people, take away their claws, take away their fangs. They can't protect themselves, they can't protect their children, they can't protect their property. That's a pretty, it's a pretty horrible place and a direction that we're going into. So me personally, I'm going to say no to all of that. You guys tell me what you think about it. Um, I know that there's lots of people out there who are going to be like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you accept? You know, this is just a little tiny thing. Here's what I have to say to you. Um, this is America. We have something called a Constitution. <laughs> you know, you tell me what parts of the Constitution that you're willing to infringe on and, and put um, little pressures on or you're willing to get rid of altogether. You tell me what parts are cool for you to get rid of. I personally don't want to get rid of any of it. I'm willing to defend all of it. I want all of it to stand as it is. That's what I believe. What do you believe? Uh, let me know here. You, please feel free to leave comments. Let us know if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Maybe if you have some more information. Um, this is going to unfold in the next couple of days. We have no clue what the Trump administration is going to come out with. We have no idea of whether or not Democrats are going to accept that. I could tell you whatever little things they get from us, even if they get one inch from us, they're going to take that and then when they have the ability, they're going to hit us with the mile. So that's what's going to happen. That's my opinion. You let me know what you think. Leave it here in the comment. I also want to um, invite everyone to support whatever Second Amendment foundation organization you think is out there fighting for you. It could be the NRA, it could be the GOA, Second Amendment Foundation, whatever, whoever, by the way. There's lots of folks like myself out there fighting. If you want to support us, you could do that on Patreon. Um, you could follow us on GunStreamer. We have lots of different ways and things that we could do. Hit me up anytime. My number is actually out there. Lots of people call me from time to time, text me all the time. So you, you can easily find it. Just support the folks who are out there fighting for the Second, Second Amendment right now. I want to invite everyone to do that. All right, so uh, I'm going to tell everyone, please smash the thumbs ups on this video. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so that you can be notified every time we put up videos. Thanks a lot for watching and thanks so much for your patience uh, over the last week while we were gone. I will be talking to you soon.